On to our series Behind the Ballot. And this week we caught up with John Hickenlooper. He's the Democratic mayor of Denver who's now running for the governor of Colorado. CBS News chief political consultant Mark Ambender recently spoke to Hickenlooper. Take a look at Mark's report. Mayor Hickenlooper, thank you for joining us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, the economy is in the tank. Voters are very angry, and, and there are at least three ballot initiatives uh, that, if passed, would make it much more difficult for the next governor and legislature to make spending decisions. So why? Why do you want to be governor amid, amid all this? <laughs> well, you know, in the end, I think that I am better suited to turn this state around and and, and get people back to work than, than anybody else. You know, I was started out as a business person, came out to Colorado as a geologist and in the recession of the early 80s, I got laid off and had to kind of reinvent myself and opened restaurants across the country. And I think that experience, plus having, you know, at least some experience in, in government as mayor of Denver, is what we need if we're going to really reinvent ourselves and, and, and create a culture that is, you know, pro-business, but at the same time, you know, protecting our land and waters and, and our quality of life. Uh, the Republican Party in your state is uh, in, in chaos. I don't, I don't need to tell you that. And, and there are a lot of folks who think that well, one reason why you're doing so well compared to other Democrats running statewide is simply because people uh, are turned off by the Republican candidate and, and uh, Tom Tancredo, who is, uh, who is uh, running outside the party. So are voters voting uh, for you or against Republicans? <laughs> I don't know. That's a hard one to answer. Uh, you know, we've seen polls that if you took either one of them out, I'm still uh, still leading. What we've tried to do is talk about, you know, how we can bring a business perspective to turn this economy around. How can we make government smaller like we've done in, in the city? The city is 7 percent fewer employees than when we started. We want to do that same thing in the state, but do it in a way that, you know, defines Colorado as a place that does things differently, that we can be innovative. Uh, and we can be, again, pro-business, but at the same time, uh, uh, pro neighborhood and pro quality of life. Um, your former school superintendent Michael Bennett, uh, now the senator and incumbent, uh, is is uh, facing a real tough uh, re-election or election because this is his first um, his first real election. What lessons from from your campaign do you think uh, might uh, might might benefit him? You're doing much better than he is uh, in in Denver suburbs, for example. Well, I don't think Michael uh, needs me to give him any advice. I mean, he's one of the hardest working you know, smartest people I know. He's just in a very a different race. He's, you know, in Washington and is perceived by people as part of Washington, even though this is the first time he's ever run for office, right? Yeah. Uh, he's being perceived as this incumbent. Uh, really, when you look at it, Michael's probably one of the few people who actually could change Washington. Uh, he's got the social skills and the smarts to, to really do that. But he's in a, you know, he's in a tough race, but he, He's a hard worker. I mean, I, I would think anybody, nobody should should write him off. He's he's in it for the right up to go right up to the last day. Um, one of your ads, one of your earliest ads, very memorable, shows you literally uh, stepping out of the shower. The image of you clean, promised not to run any negative ads, um, and you haven't so far. Uh, but uh, Tom Tancredo, in, in some polls, is creeping up to you. So between now and the election, are you still going to uh, uh, hold yourself to the, uh, I guess you'd call it the shower promise? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, we, we made a, a commitment for a reason, right? The, these negative attack ads are, are such short-term, they're appealing to anger and, and, and frustration, but, but they really leave jagged scars. And there's a reason why General Motors doesn't do attack ads against Toyota or McDonald's against Burger King. When you, when you do an attack ad, not only are you putting down your, your competitor or your opponent, but you're also diminishing all the people that believe in them. And what, what happens is after the election, people can't come together. And at this point, this country needs, you know, no, I tell people that election day, November 2nd, is not the end, it's the beginning. And we need Democrats and Republicans and independents Everybody's got to come together and say, all right, where are those places we agree? And let's get, let's get to work turning the economy around. Let's fix our schools. You know, let's get our transportation system so it works. But, but let's do it together. Well, Mayor Hickenlooper, thanks very much for joining us. Oh, you bet. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it.